Today we're going to have a hands-on lesson where we use the distributive property and partial quotients. Partial quotients is a new vocabulary word. Partial quotients is a way to divide where you break the dividend into parts that are easier to divide. You may need to pause that so you can write this in your vocabulary page. Okay, so here's an example. This is an easy one just to show you what these are. So sometimes when you're doing a division problem, you may not know exactly how many sixes goes into it. Because you may not be as good at your basic facts as you should be. So what we can do with partial products is we can come up with something that we can divide into it easily, something that you do know. So if I didn't know how many sixes were in 44, I could take something like, I know there's at least 5, because 5 times 6 is 30, so I can take out 5 sixes. I'm going to write it here on the side. So if I take out 5 sixes, that's going to be 30 that I've taken out, or 5 times 6. So I still have 14 left. So I can take out some more 6s. So I could take out one more, but I know I could take out two more, because two 6s is 12. So I'm going to take out two more 6s, gets rid of 12, and I have two left. Once I get to less than 6, I know that's going to be my remainder and that I can't take any more 6s out. So if I really wanted to, I could have taken one 6 out at a time. It would basically be repeated subtraction. But the more you can take out, the less writing and the more efficient this will be. So now I have these partial quotients. So quotients is the answer to a division problem and each of those are parts of it. So I need to put those parts together. So 5 plus 2 equals 7. And I have a remainder in this one. So the answer, or the quotient, is 7 remainder 2. Here's one more like what we'll be doing today. So here's my first example of partial quotients. I have 847 divided by 7. So as I said, I could just keep taking 7s out. So I could take 1 7 out. 847 subtract 7 is 840. And I could keep taking 1 out and 1 out and 1 out, and this would take me forever. So what I want to do is, usually I like to see if there's a 100 or a 10 or... Something like that that I can take out. So I know that I could take out 100 sevens. If I take out 100 sevens, that would be 700. So much quicker to take 100 at a time than 1. That leaves me with 140. If I don't know how many sevens go into 140, once again I could take out 5 or 10 or just one seven at a time again. But I know by looking at this one that I could take out 20. If you don't know that, that's okay. That's the great thing about this strategy is you can take out a varying amount of numbers. But I'm gonna take out 20. So 20 sevens is 140, which leaves me with no remainder. So I can't take out any more sevens because there's nothing left. So I add up my partial quotients, 1 plus 100 plus 20, which equals 121. No remainder, because there weren't any left. Second example, so once again, watch on this one. So the goal with any strategy is to be as efficient as possible. So. Once again, I want to see, I'll usually start with 100. Can I take out 100? I can, that'd be 400. I'm going to think, could I take out 200? 
that would be 800 so I could could I take out 300 all at once no because that would be 1200 so I'm going to take out 200 once again you could have just taken out 10 or 100 but I don't want this problem to go clear below my iPad so I'm going to take as many hundreds as I can so if I take out 200 fours 200 times 4 is 800 so I just got rid of 800 of that this leaves me with 132 so we know we can't take out any more 100s so how many 10s could I take out? So 10 fours would be 40 20 fours would be 80 30 fours would be 120 and now that's what I want. So I'm going to take out 30 fours, which was 120. Now I have just 12 left, so I know I can take out 3 fours. 3 fours is 12, leaves me nothing left. Add up my partial quotients, and I get a quotient of 200. 33. So that was the first half of our lesson, but the second half was using the distributive property, which we've used before with multiplication. This will be very similar, just division. So we're going to take that 848 and divide it into three different parts. So our hundreds, which is 800, our tens, which is 40, and our ones, which is 8. For this lesson, we've picked some numbers that go into our divisor very well. So, we're going to be dividing this by 4. So now we just divide each part. We'll start with our hundreds. 800 divided by 4. So 4 goes into 8 twice two zeros, so 200. Then we divide our tens, 40 divided by 4, which is 10. Then our ones, 8 divided by 4, which is 2. Then, just like with our partial quotients, we're going to add all of those together, 200 plus 10 plus 2, which equals 212. So that's my first example of the distributive property. Here's my second. A lot of examples today. 396 divided by 3. So I'm going to break this down. 396. We're dividing this by 3. So I start with 300 divided by 3, which is 100 then 90 divided by 3, which is 30, and 6 divided by 3, which is 2. I add those together, 100 plus 30 plus 2 is 132. All right, now I'm going to have you do a practice problem, one of each of those methods. If you need to go back and rewatch either of them some more, go ahead and do that. So here's your first practice problem. The instructions say to divide, and you need to use the distributive property and complete the area models. So go ahead and pause. So the area models should look like this, 428. We're dividing it by 2, which gives you 200 plus 10 plus 4. Add those together, you get 214. Second practice problem, slightly different instructions for our other strategy. Divide, use the distributive property or partial quotients. Go ahead and pause. Okay, there are multiple ways you could do this. Going by hundreds, tens, and ones, the most efficient way would be to take out 100 first, 
which 100 threes is 300, which leaves us with 78. Then, if we're taking out tens, we can take out 20, subtract 60, leaves us with 18, and then we can take out 6, which leaves us with no remainders. Add our partial quotients, 100 plus 20 plus 6, and we get a quotient of 126. And you may not have used those exact partial quotients, but no matter how you did it, it should have equaled 126. Okay, if you feel okay with those two practice problems, we'll move on to the problems we'll check in class. If you're still having a hard time, go back and watch some of those examples again. Here's problem one. Divide, use the distributive property, complete the area models. 936 divided by 3. Pause that, and then there's just one more problem. Number two, divide, use the distributive property or partial quotients. So 675 divided by 5. Go ahead and pause that. And now that you're done, I hope you have a wonderful night.